Hi, my name is Chance Taylor here at SuperDroid Robots, and in this video I'm going to go through the features and operating procedures for the LT2F, aka Bloodhound, from our tactical line of track robots. When you receive your robot, it'll come in a nice pelican case, packed full of a few basic items. First item is the OCU, so you can control the robot. Second item is the charger or the battery charging system. And the third item is the robot itself. This robot is a great piece of equipment for extending your reach and increasing the distance between you and possible harm. Because of its maneuverability, and customizable platform. The LT2F has been qualified during a series of stringent NIST tests. Here are some of the features. Weatherproof chassis to protect the robot against rain or dry other harsh weather conditions. Aggressive tread for helping clear the obstacles and tackle stairs. Flipper arms to correct robot orientation, clear obstacles, and stabilize. A front tilt camera for over 100 degrees of viewing in the forward up and down direction. LED lights for visibility in low light areas and two-way audio for audio monitoring, giving commands or possible hostage negotiation, as well as a backup camera and a drive camera, allowing the operator better situational awareness while navigating in either direction. We want to begin by powering on the robot. An LED indicator will show you that the power is on. That way the robot's ready to wake up and receive signals from the control unit. Then we'll power on the control unit by pressing on the power and turning on the tablet. Usually the power button to the tablet display is on the top left hand corner. Once the tablet is on, you'll have an indicator for the program you're going to use, SuperDroid Robots program, for operating the robot. Simply click on it you're going to need to give it a second to power up. Once the program loads, if you have any issues, you can always restart the program or refresh the screen. There's also an option for an on-screen display where if you tap the screen, press the lock button in the top right corner. It'll lock open some other options and features so you understand battery levels and have multiple buttons for operating the robot. The OCU comes with a shoulder strap allowing you more freedom of movement to manipulate the controls. Ensure your antenna is properly oriented in the upright position, and then you can begin operating the robot. Controls are very intuitive and clearly labeled. In order to drive forward, move the joystick forward, and same in the opposite direction, as well as turning. Left is left, and right is right. While having it the on-screen display up, you'll have an indicator of the flipper arms in the robot. While moving the flipper arm joystick in the right direction, flipper arms will move downward and you'll get a degree display from the zero position, which is park. You can also press the park button to return back to that zero position so that you can drive uninterrupted. For choosing one of the multiple cameras, you'll have the camera select button. Simply switch up or down to navigate or cycle through the different cameras. On this particular robot, the only camera that has zoom and focus is the nose camera. So I'll cycle to the nose camera. When I zoom, this camera goes up to 27 times zoom and focuses extremely well, allowing you to read small details or font from a distance. If at any time you get lost in focusing through the camera, you can simply zoom out and zoom back in to wherever you were and it'll be clear again, auto-focused. Tilting the nose camera is up for the camera to look up and down for the camera to look down. 
For low light areas, you'll have the lights option. And when clicked on, the nose camera lights will light up. Now this camera, as well as the drive camera and the backup camera, all have night vision. So even in total darkness, you can see what you're doing and where you're going. If at any point during operation you'd like to record a video, snap a photo, talk on the speaker, or use the microphone, simply tap on the button of choice. Tapping on the record button brings up a window saying that recording has started. Simply press OK, and now the recording is in process. To stop, repeat the same procedure. Tap on the button, select OK, and recording is finished. Same goes for snapping a photo. Tap on the button, press OK. If you want to hear what's going on from the robot's perspective, tap on the speaker, and you'll hear everything. Tap it once more to turn it off. If you'd like to talk on the mic, you're going to have to hold it down and speak through the tablet. Through the tablet. When you're done talking, you're simply, done release talking the simply release the button. To adjust the speed of the robot, red indicates that it's at a high speed. Tap on the same button, it'll turn gray, and the speed indicator will reduce. And you'll see that the robot drives much slower than before. And now we'll go through high speed. When navigating obstacles, sometimes you'll want to press the park or stabilize button to actuate the flipper arms. Stabilize, tapped on, will bring the flipper arms to the stabilizing position, usually used for stairs or steep inclines. When you want to park the flipper arms back to the driving position, press the park button and the flipper arms return to the zero degree spot. A couple of other features about the tablet and the on-screen display. For the overlay visibility, you can clip on low, medium, or high, so you see more of the on-screen display, or if you want to completely remove the on-screen display, click the unlock button, and it'll go away within seconds. That way you can focus on what's being recorded or where the robot is. Now while operating the robot from one area to another, if you're just trying to get somewhere, adjust the speed settings to high. It's still slow enough that you can kind of see what's going on through the video camera, but not too fast that you'll miss anything. Now the tread is very aggressive, so it'll help you tackle obstacles, much like this curve, without any issue. This robot is great for low clearance settings. If you'd like to inspect the underside of a vehicle, simply drive under the vehicle. And move the camera up or down, depending on what you're looking at. Approaching the obstacle like a set of stairs, drive up to the obstacle, lift the nose of the robot up in the air with the flipper arms, and move forward to engage the first step. Rotate the flipper arms back about parallel with the ground level. Stabilize will be engaged after you get up onto that second step and move forward. Press the stabilize button and continue moving forward slowly and you will progress up the stairs. Coming back down the stairs is the same in the opposite direction. Reverse order. Try to keep the robot as straight as possible. When you get down to that bottom step, it's okay to lift up the flipper arms a little bit to allow the vehicle to make contact with its tread. 
Once you're back down on the ground, go ahead and park the flip arms and continue driving. In low light or total darkness, you have the option of using the LED light or the IR feature of the camera. Now when powering down everything, we're going to start with the controller. Exit the program, click yes to shut down both the tablet and the controller. If the tablet stays on, it'll run down the controller battery and you'll have to recharge the controller and turn it on to wait for the tablet to charge up before you can be begin operating. Now that the tablet's shut down, power down the controller and put it in its storage settings. After the controller shut down, you can power down the robot. Now that the LED indicator is off, the robot is off. Take the charger, plug it into a power source. When you do so, the charger's lights will come on to indicate that they're ready for charging. When they're green, they're good to go. After you've been using the robot and you plug in the robot to the charger, the lights will turn red until it becomes fully charged. This is the robot charger. Unscrew the charging cap or dust cap. Make sure that the teeth on the inside of the charging cable are oriented in the right position to insert into the robot. Push firmly in place and screw the cap. The cap will then seat into the robot and begin charging. For charging the remote, grab the remote charging cable, insert it into the remote charging port. The light will turn green or red on the charger, and when it's done, it'll turn green. Putting everything away, go in the reverse order, put everything in the case, and you're good to go.